violence, drugs, thefts, and even prostitution. That's what people say is happening in and around a local domestic violence shelter, and you, the taxpayer, are flipping the bill. It's a horrible place. It's filthy. It's disgusting. For us, there's no food for you either. There were girls outside smoking pot, shooting dope. Kidnapping incident, argument, drugs, to sexual proposition, people knocking on your door at 11, 12 o'clock at night asking for rides, for money to use your phone. Neighbors who live near the shelter say they're tired of empty promises, and they think administrators should spend more time fixing the problems and less time fundraising. Women and children come to this secure facility behind me, hoping to find safe haven from abusive situations inside their own home. Unfortunately, some women claim that the conditions inside this facility are worse than the ones they came from. The house was disgusting, filthy, gross. The um, high chairs were dirty, the kitchens were dirty. It's filthy, it's disgusting. The steps have these black things with, and they, they have like sock hair and hair all stuck in it when you walk up and down. It's a horrible place. There were girls outside smoking pot, shooting dope in their cars. Some of the women there would pull their three-year-old hair, kids' hair straight up, and the staff would just look and say nothing. Constantly, you know, being on our property, we found drug paraphernalia, baggies, hypodermic needles, rolling paper packages. When you have people that are allowed to um, walk in and out of this type of of agency at three in the morning, get picked up and dropped off on private property, have fights. I mean, we've had everything from a kidnapping incident to arguments to drugs to sexual propositions of, you know, residents in the neighborhood. During our investigation, we discovered that the Hernando County Sheriff's Office received 187 calls for service to the facility in just one year, resulting in at least four arrests. In comparison, Pasco County Salvation Army Shelter only had 14 calls for service in one year, and Stewart County's Safe Space saw the same number of arrests in just under two years. Attempts to interview Shelter Director Shannon Sokolowski resulted in a vicious mudslinging campaign against RNRF by staff and even members of what is supposed to be a professional board of directors. There's a big sign with your face your name. Do not contact Real News. The only member of the board who took time to speak with RNRF was Sheriff Al Nienheis. In a statement, Nienheis told RNRF that he and his staff have had no unusual activity in and around the facility and even stated that the number of calls were no more prevalent than those from similar shelters. But wait, didn't we just reveal that in the same amount of time, the Pasco County shelter only had 14 calls for service and with no arrests? versus 187 calls for service by the Hernando County Sheriff's Office. You know, after reading the story and hearing some of the things that are going on inside and, and putting the two pieces of the puzzle together, it's it's appalling. It really is appalling. You know, the residents in the area are, are frustrated and uh, nothing gets done. Nicole Tedesco says she and other neighbors complained to Director Sokolowski several times, but the responses they received were less than helpful and many times condescending. Frustrated with Sokolowski's apathetic attitude, homeowners contacted County Commissioner Diane Rowden, who in turn contacted Hernando County Chief Deputy Michael Maurer. But despite all their efforts, neighbors say nothing has changed. And I feel that maybe if they had a stronger director or there were different policies in place, there wouldn't be a cause for concern for safety. Is the director accountable? Is you know the state accountable? Is the board of directors accountable? Who is accountable? Director Shannon Sokolowski is supposed to be responsible for all aspects of operating the facility, but some say she spends more time fundraising than she does resolving issues inside the shelter. The Don Center's total revenue last year exceeded $800,000, with a majority received from federal and state grants, and over half of the total revenue pays for employee salaries and benefits. The big thing that was continuously brought up by the director of the program was funding. They're, they're not providing them what they actually need. Women had to walk to get picked up and dropped off because funding was inadequate. What I'm seeing as a resident, you know, a large majority are, you know, not using it for, for what it's there for. Really, what type of people are going in there for help and why? And when several of them openly admitted we just needed a place to save money. 
I go out to see my husband every day. In my eyes, I think it's poor. I think they're money hungry. I think they're getting money from the states or wherever they can in donations just to make it look like they're helping people when they are not. And it's a shame because you know, we do have vulnerable populations in our community that really do need these services. I don't believe that she's effective in her position because if she were, this would not be an ongoing issue. And stop abusing the person that's abused. Residents in this neighborhood want to know, will administrators take action? And are women and children behind these walls safe? Reporting from Spring Hill, I'm Tom Lemons.